There is nothing quite like watching a great movie. The feeling of getting lost in a fictional world and developing deep one-way relationships with the characters on screen is unparalleled. Oftentimes, audiences feel that the two hours of escapism they are afforded just isn't enough and want nothing more than to spend just a little bit longer in that universe with the people they have simultaneously come to know so intimately and yet hardly know at all. Many times movies that prove popular in the box office do receive that much requested sequel but for whatever reason fail to capture the same excitement when the sequel is wheeled out. With that in mind then, I'm Ellie with What Culture, and here are 9 sequels to popular movies that nobody watched. Number 9. Easy Rider 2 The Ride Home Led by an endlessly talented cast, Dennis Hopper's Easy Rider is generally considered a masterpiece with the likes of Peter Fonda, Jack Nicholson and Hopper himself on a motorcycle-bound quest across America. The pace is unashamedly unhurried as the characters take in new sights, new people and a great deal of drugs. It was only a modest success at the box office, but its legacy as a piece that saw in the start of the 1970s and importantly the end of the 1960s ensures that it remains a must-watch for any budding cinephile. The same can't be said for the ill-judged sequel that came a whole 43 years later. The film is written by and stars Phil Pitzer, a man known for Easy Rider 2 The Ride Home. An ill-conceived passion project, it meanders and has nothing to say except, of course, that Peter Fonda's Wyatt died in 9-11. Every single aspect of it is baffling and completely misses the point of the film that inspired it. It is nothing short of a blessing that nobody ever heard of, let alone watched, this misguided continuation of a saga that shouldn't be, and for all intents and purposes, isn't a saga. Number 8. American Pie Presents Girls' Rules with a budget of $11 million, 1999's American Pie was a runaway success upon its release, pulling in a whopping $235.5 million at the box office. After that came two sequels, a 10-year gap and then a final reunion to see off all the characters once and for all. And after that? Five more direct-to-DVD sequels with almost none of the original cast. Perhaps most surprisingly of all, the latest one released as recently as 2020. American Pie Presents Girls Rules marked the first movie in the franchise not to star Eugene Levy. And if that isn't a red flag, who knows what is. Another first in the series, this one was led by an all-female cast and saw them banding together before graduation to... Well, this is American Pie, so no prizes for guessing where this is going. The film was criticised for its unauthentic feel, likely lent to the fact that the crew was almost entirely made up of men. Surprisingly though, there is some praise to be given for the dumb but competent gross-out gags that kept the spirit of the series alive. Number 7. Granddaddy Daycare During the 1980s, Eddie Murphy was an unstoppable force. Filling the screen with his charm and charisma, it seemed that he could make any script sparkle just by being there. However, it would be unfair to say that he didn't lend his name to anything of note after that decade. Standouts like Bowfinger, the Shrek series, and even 2019's Dolomite Is My Name proved that he still had it, though the highlights started becoming fewer and farther between. Daddy Daycare was not one of these highlights. A family-friendly affair, it revolved around two recently fired pals starting up their very own daycare centre. Critics called it boring, depressing and even unwatchable. Though the film proved a success and ended up bringing in $164.4 million at the box office. A sequel, Daddy Day Camp, arrived four years later with Cuba Gooding Jr. taking on the leading role, then a subsequent 12 years after that came Granddaddy Daycare starring Danny Trejo. The comedy released director DVD to very little fanfare, with those who did see it left perturbed by the complete lack of logical grounding and a strange, tonally inconsistent subplot about the struggles of coping with the onset of dementia. Number 6. Exorcist 2 The Heretic when The Exorcist was released in 1973, it broke new ground, sending ripples through the horror genre that are still felt today. It introduced a new kind of terror that strayed away from the monsters that were commonplace at the time. Upon its release, rumours of vomiting, fainting and people fleeing the cinema were aplenty, and the buzz was unmistakable. 
This led to areas of the UK banning the movie from being shown, and those that were showing it boasted of queues in the freezing cold that lasted hours. This led to an eye-watering $441.3 million box office intake. Inevitably cashing in on this phenomenon, a sequel was released four years later. Helmed by a new director, John Borman, the movie's universe aged in real time, taking place four years after the events of the first. Linda Blair returned as Regan, haunted by the repressed memories of what came before, with Max von Sydow reprising his role as Father Merrin. But this wasn't enough to save a movie that critics felt was laughable in its poor script and nonsensical plot. The comparatively meagre box office intake of $30.7 million is evidence enough that even the best exorcist in town cannot exorcise this film's demons. Number 5. The Scorpion King Book of Souls Nobody is going to accuse 2002's The Scorpion King as being a great movie. Acting as a prequel to the Mummy series, the very best that can be said about it is that it's inoffensive and provides 92 minutes of mindless fun. Despite its unspectacular nature, that didn't stop fans from flocking to fill theatre seats, earning it an impressive $180.6 million at the box office. Unsurprisingly, a sequel followed six years later, and then another one, and another one, and finally in 2018, audiences were treated to the fifth instalment in a series that probably should have stopped after its debut outing. Gone are all the original cast and the theatrical release, with Zach McGowan now taking on the titular role. Critics' impressions are hard to come by, but the general consensus seems to be that, again, it provides some dumb, mindless entertainment to while away 102 minutes. Number 4. Grease 2 While not necessarily unknown, the popularity of this sequel paled in comparison to the smash hit success of 1978's Grease. Taking place two years after the events of the original, Grease 2 did the honourable thing and introduced the audience to a new cast of characters, as opposed to facsimile roles given to lesser known performers. Lesser known performers abound, however, with the two leads now played by Maxwell Caulfield and Michelle Pfeiffer, serving as something of a breakout role for the latter. The plot followed a Shakespearean trajectory, having Pfeiffer's Stephanie part of a gang who can only date members of the T-Birds, a greaser gang. With Caulfield's Michael not quite fitting that description, he had only one choice. He'd better shape up. Opinion was divided on this oft-forgotten sequel, with some critics praising its improved choreography and more catchy musical numbers. Others, however, derided the movie for being too similar to its predecessor and having a paper-thin plot. Whatever the consensus, audiences spoke with their wallets, with the box office of $15.2 million looking rather measly next to the original's electrifying $395 million. Number 3. Aladdin 2 – The Return of Jafar Disney is no stranger to direct-to-video sequels, with the likes of Mulan 2, Bambi 2 and The Jungle Book 2 showing you just what your favourite animated movie would look like without any of the original cast. What makes Return of Jafar so interesting is that most of the major players, apart from Robin Williams, returned for this 1994 sequel. Following the events of the first movie, the return of Jafar sees Jafar, well, return. After the lamp he's imprisoned in is discovered by a crook, he's set free and seeks to regain his power and take revenge on those who captured him. Originally planned as a television special, it was decided late into production that it would take the form of a direct sequel, and the lean 66-minute runtime reflects this. Audiences noted a drop in animation quality as well as pacing issues that made even its mercifully short length feel too long. Perhaps it's a blessing that this one never made it to theatres and is confined to life as a curio. Number 2. Shock Treatment The Rocky Horror Picture Show had a troubled start. Released in 1975, it was quickly withdrawn from theatres planning to show it due to consistently low turnouts in the ones that did. Audiences who did see it were left perplexed by the incomprehensible plot and compared it unfavourably to the stage show that came before. Over time, thanks to a series of midnight screenings, the movie found its audience and took on a life of its own. Before long, people were attending showings in droves, dressed in characters, shouting lines and singing along to the musical numbers. Suddenly, the Rocky Horror Picture Show went from DOA to cult classic to bona fide phenomenon. Recreating the effects of something so important was never going to be easy. 
Despite Richard O'Brien and Jim Sharman once again taking on writing duties, with Sharman directing, this sort of sequel never came close to achieving a cult following. The movie sees Brad and Janet return, portrayed by different actors, as they find themselves held captive on a game show. However, it was dubbed too safe considering what preceded it, as well as, of all things, being too nonsensical. So let's do the time warp again and just forget that this one ever happened. Number 1. Splash 2 Releasing in 1984, Splash proved to be a hit with audiences and critics alike. The movie tells the tale of Alan, played by the ever-charming Tom Hanks, who at a young age fell into the sea and suffered a near-death experience, where he was seemingly rescued by a mermaid. Twenty years later, he finds himself unable to make romantic connections and wandering back to that day, before finally deciding to return to where it happened. Critics were enamoured with its sugar-sweet romantic tale of boy meets fish, witty script and Ron Howard's mesmerising underwater cinematography. The question is, how do you go about making a sequel to a high-concept movie that ended with the two leads accepting they could never set foot on land again? Unfortunately, that question still stands. With Hanks and Hannah not returning to reprise their roles, the characters return with inexplicably different faces. They also decide to do away with the finality of the original third act, and find themselves firmly on terra firma almost immediately. With none of the original crew on board, the charm and sharp script seem to have left with them, leaving no question as to why nobody talks about this direct-to-video sequel. And that concludes our list. If you can think of any other sequels that nobody's watched, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.